quietness till all our striving cease, till from our soul the strain and stress, and let our order life confess thy beauty of thy peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I remember a few years ago when we didn't have a minister and I had to do a funeral service at one of our congregation for a young man. But this young man and most of his family did not have a church connection at all. To my knowledge, they had no faith in Jesus Christ. Yet at the graveside, some of the members of the family came and asked me if I thought the deceased would go to heaven. But my sisters, I politely said that the missing child was not man, but God to me. But one in particular got quite cross, and in Jamaica, when we talk about cross, cross, angry, miserable, one came up to me and for, for, for that answer that I said, of course, they will be in heaven. They were, he was a good person. Friends, such a question arises often at times of a debt and it often asks of a past. So this morning, friends, I want to share with you from God's word to put before you the way of salvation that you have assurance about heaven as your eternal destiny. I want to say at the start that this will be an uncomfortable sermon for some of you and for some it will. I pray open your eyes to the fact that you are not saved and you have no assurance of heaven. If I were to ask you to put of your hands if you have if you want to go to heaven and I'm sure all hands would go up. If I then ask you to put your hands if you were certain you would go to heaven when you die and also certain fewer hands will go up and fewer hands will go up that should go up. Friends I can tell you, if you listen to many of our Protestant churches, they say that many people within our churches are deceived as to how you become a Christian and about salvation. When I listen to them, I was deeply challenged about just such a fact being true of saying today. So this morning, brothers and sisters, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 31, is a straight teaching that I am about to deliver. Friends, Jesus has just started on his journey again. Verse 17, after blessing the children, and you heard last week, Gospel reading, Jesus blessing the children, verses 13 to 16. You know the incident. The disciples wanted to prevent the children coming to Jesus because they were tired. Jesus, despite the physical tiredness, has time for each child and blesses each of them. It is not one general blessing, friends, for all, but each child is taken 
into Jesus' arms and blessed. Having blessed the children, Christ began to walk away. And that is where we pick up our reading from Mark's Gospel this morning. Then in verse 17, we read that a young rich man comes running up to Jesus and fall at his feet. Maybe, just maybe, the young man had been watching Christ with the children and realized he will not be turned away by Christ. He spoke to Christ. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He is taken aback a little by the initial response of Christ. Verse 18 to 19. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. I was always troubled by the response of Jesus here, brothers and sisters. Friends, when you listen to the reading, it would appear that Christ is saying that he is not good, and the type of good should not apply to him. Yet, when I read a little deeper, I realize that what in fact was happening was that Christ was challenging this young man to think through the cost of what he has just asked. If good can only apply, be applied to God, and this young man has applied it to Christ, then he had better take seriously what Christ is about to say. He's running after Christ and falling on his knees before him, show an emotional response and impulse nature about Christ, wants him to have eyes open to the cost of eternal life and all the implications of it. Friends, Jesus went on to say, you know the commandments. Christ goes on to set before this young man the moral law of God. Now look at this this year, brothers and sisters. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not be fraud. Honor your father and mother. I am sure many, if not all of you, could I say have kept these laws myself or at least I didn't habitually go around breaking them. Friends, measuring yourself against these laws, brothers and sisters, as this young man did, you might be able to respond as, as he does in verse 20. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. This young man, on his knees before Christ, confidentially asserted that he has kept these laws, and yet his first question to Jesus reveals that he is not assured of salvation, of eternal life. This young man, morally upright before men and here before Christ. He has no assurance of eternal life because somewhere in his heart he knows that keeping the law being morally upright, good and all as it is, does not bring salvation and assurance of eternal life. His reply, friends, all these I have kept reveals the loving in his heart. Is there something more I need to do? What is there that is missing and leaves me unassured of eternal life? Friends, we too can ask ourselves this question this morning. Is there something more I need to do? What is there missing and leaves me on 
assure of eternal life. Then Christ put his fingers, finger right on the very point of this man's life. Very, Jesus says in verse 21, look at him and love him. One thing you lack, Jesus said, go, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Just like how the young man is challenged to give all his riches and then follow Christ, many times we too have the same challenge of giving all the things of the world and our possession to come and follow Christ. Especially as it comes down to ministry, brothers and sisters, we see how we have a shortage of priests or glasses because persons are afraid to give up, give up their jobs and come for the Christ. Friends, I know of persons who has given up a lot of things and for the Christ. He was in church too, you know, giving. Friends, we have to look into it. We need to give up things, brothers and sisters. Give up things. The hatred, the backbiting, all of these things that are hindering us from coming and following Christ. The church will grow, brothers and sisters. We have to look into ourselves. We watch ourselves in evil giving. Evil giving, friends, is a challenge for some of us. Church, I get too much. Evil ourselves, do you know? Evil ourselves coming here to get involved in the ministry and work of the church is a part of giving up the things of the world and following Christ. Friends, let us not be like that young man. What is the response this morning? Are you like the young man today, brothers and sisters, who will walk away from cast, our heads bowed down and face swallowed? And all because we would not give up our wealth for Christ. Friends, we crave the things of this world. The Samaritan right said there are the things of this world that will go deep. And all we have to do is to give up. Give up. Some of us spend too much time craving for the things of the world. And not craving for Christ. The only way we can have treasures in heaven, friends, is obeying the commandment of Christ. And He gave these outlines this morning. He gave us the outline of us for we need this morning. Friends, the disciples are amazed in verse 24 of the gospel we need this morning. At this, but evil was shocking is to come when Christ said them, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He illustrated it by taking the largest of the animal, the camel, and asking how difficult it would be to be trained and evil with it. The illustration brothers and sisters being in circles wondering who then can be saved? Christ answered their queries by stating that man cannot be saved himself. In fact, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Salvation, friends, is impossible for man and possible only with God. There is no satisfaction without salvation. It is this point, friends, I want to bring on this morning. Here before
live a life that only speaks for me. Friends, by their fruits, you will recognize them. A good tree cannot be a bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot be a good fruit. When you enter through the narrow gate, and you are walking a narrow road, there is evidence if it is your daily life. You no longer love the things that God hates. You no longer follow the ways of the world. You no longer have the desire of the world, brothers and sisters. There is this evidence, good food coming forth from your life. Take a moment, friends. Take a moment and listen to verses 21 and 23, to 23 of Matthew 7, verses 13 to 23. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will say, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evil doers. Friends, do you understand? what Christ is saying here. It is not enough to just call on the name of Christ. You must do the will of God the Father. You see, many people claim to have made a commitment to Christ, but there is absolutely no evidence of it in their lives. Some of you here this morning claim to be Christian, but there is no evidence of it in you claim to have invited Christ in your life, but the truth is there has been no repentance of your sin. You have to repent, my brothers and sisters. You are still in love with the world and the things of this world, and there is no good fruit to be seen in your life. You come here Sunday by Sunday, and you sing His praises, and you live exactly as you come in. You know people could not tell if you are a Christian because you are no different than them around you. When you are here and when you are with other Christians, you make all the right noises, but there is no reality to it in your daily life. Friends, I told you,
this morning. It is not enough that you are a good person, that you are normally morally upright, but you are kind and considerate. Those things are good, but they do not bring salvation and they do not gain eternal life. Working up to the fact that you, that as you sit here this morning, with all your good deeds piled up, and you are lost without Christ and bound for your eternity. Friends, it's amazing the number of people who come here week after week and we, we listen to the sermons and line and all these things who remain totally untouched by the gospel. What is even more amazing is the number of persons who talk a good talk when the pastor is around or they are in the company of other Christians and yet there is no fruit evidence in their daily lives. It amazes me, friends, the number of persons who claim to follow Jesus Christ but who remains wedded to the things of this world and it is impossible to distinguish them from this world. And this morning, you know Christ is speaking and challenging you right now about that. You are no different from the world and you are in the world and you are of the world and worldliness that wrecks and it takes your life, not Christ. Ah, but Reverend Teddy, I am I committed my life to Christ at the mission service. I commit myself to Christ and all things you will say, you know what listen to me carefully. It matters not. It matters not the date and place where you pray that prayer. If today you will live in the worldly manner and walk on the wide road of sin. Listen to them. We did miracles. We prophesied. We cast out demons in your name. We did this. We prayed this. Listen to Christ's response. I never knew you. Listen to the word of God this morning. You can be a good person and still be on the road to destruction. You can talk about Christ and do things in his name of Christ and still be on the road to destruction. Why? Because you never enter through the narrow gate. You never truly repent of your sin. Not just saying sorry, not just pray and to of commitment to Christ, but truly repent. Let before Christ the sins of your life and beg for forgiveness for them. Repentance, friend, is not just saying sorry. It is turning away, turning away from sin and be faithful, turning to Christ. Then you walk along the narrow road, not the right road. The narrow road, friends, did not and does not Bring out your walk around it. It remains on the narrow road. And some of you have forgotten that this morning. And you need to come back on the narrow road and start walking what you claim to be true with your lips. Some of you say the right things, but you are like these men. And you will one day hear Christ say, I never knew you. Depart from me. There are some of you here this morning, and you are deceived into thinking that you are all right because you're a good person and you do good things, but you are bound for destruction. Only a few days ago, friends, I had a conversation with someone who said many years that they deceived themselves in thinking. They were okay, but one good Friday, one good Friday, and you know, good Friday 